Well, my name is Jazzy B of Soul to Soul, one of the original Funky Dreads. I think the MIDI Music Workshop gives young people a real opportunity and, a, and, and you get an, an experience in terms of um, making music, the end of production, you know, all aspects of the whole entertainment field. And again, like I said, particularly in the uh, inner cities, there's not that many opportunities for kids to have that much of a leeway, particularly with the kind of equipment that they have and, and the type of setup and the professionalism within the, the realms of the tutors, et cetera, et cetera, who have a genuine interest in the, in the youth and um, what, they, what they're trying to do musically. I got into music I was in trouble I was doing a lot of crazy things you know and you're young and at that age that's what I wanted to be doing whatever it was smoking drinking fighting you know God knows what you know I was in it um, last year I did a, a gig at uh, Christmas um, for the mayor of Lewisham and uh, they seemed to think I had a good rapport with the crowd so the woman who organized that gig she called me up this year and was like, oh, well, how do you fancy comparing? We've got DJs, Tooney, Essentials, Jedi Family. And then I said, you know, am I singing as well? And she's like, oh, of course, of course. So I was like, all right then, definitely. But it seems like people are more interested in fights. And... Can you stop running, please? No gunshots. No gunshots. Can you stop running. There's nothing happening. Calm down. And I just saw at the front, yeah, there's like a massive poster of like Dizzy Rascal. I thought that's heavy. I thought one day, one day, you know, you know, my big poster or my single, definitely. And I'll be here to take my photo of it, you know, amongst the rest of the artists. Who knows when it will be, but it, it definitely will happen. I mean, I'm in a lucky position because I have a lot of support from my family, and my mum in particular, and that helps me a lot. Everything I do goes towards music. I'm not spending loads of money on drugs and alcohol or going out or holidays, you know, that's, these are things I've sacrificed. I do get paid for, you know, some stuff. I had quite a few well-paid gigs this year and that kind of kept me, just keeps you bouncing along, do you know what I mean? Well, that's pretty. That's a lot, a lot of customer stuff, that's why that. like That's really, and that's the, I can't believe, I come all the way to Night Town to get a selection and you're telling me these are the only two trainers in the whole place? Some people do it for the mad though. Some people show it's just a fad though. Some people think they're bad just for. See them every day. My recent thing is I bought a top hat, and I'm gonna like for my next gig. Probably what I wanted was like um kind of ballerina, a ballerina outfit. My big boots, which I always wear for my gigs anyway. Little bow tie, top hat, and a like tail jacket. And um and someone else gave me a little idea, and I thought you know it's like show you know it's like showman that kind of thing. It's a bit eccentric, I know, but that's, that's show business, isn't it? So tired of hearing the same old thing. So tired of hearing these people. When I started at MIDI, my head just became a lot more focused. With a combination of my focus, a combination of MIDI and everything that they have to offer there, yeah, just turn things around. Mm, mm, mm. So I one, think they would always two, encourage me three, to on, fly yeah, the nest. They would actively down. encourage me to do that, and I want to stand on my own two feet. Pausing it, stepping it with the hips sticking out. The mic's here. What they have done for there. me 
Sorry has me? been a massive, yeah. massive help and made step, a big step, difference to step. what my life uh, could have been uh, and uh, how it is now. Uh, 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 and we going to Hollywood. Fantastic. To know things about life, and I just think the only way you can know those things is through experience. Live it, breathe it, and feel it, be it, and that's my advice, basically. Are you sure? Yeah, work hard and have a life. Another song? Whoa. Okay, I'll do another song. Believed what you said, I let you fill my head with your bitterness and your misguided. But now I know that my heart's a pearl And I gave you more than you deserved I know that you don't understand You probably think I'm still the same, still the same Girl, but I'm not Cause you live, you learn, you keep on going Each time you take a little more knowing I had to fight, it's not right But I saw the light, you never stopped me growing Thank you During my time, I think it was slightly more exciting A bit more interesting because you did cross collateralize with various other areas and, and you had that human element, that organic um, mixing and, and um, mingling with different people, etc., etc. So there was levels of um, expressing yourselves in other ways. Whereas nowadays, um, I think those opportunities are few and far, um, simply because we are in an era of um, technology and trying to embrace this whole idea. And, um, <laughs> For want of a better word, you can be a one-man band now. I kind of got into this thinking that we could have this whole gimmick of, you know, coming on in you know, a military gear. And we kind of forgot about that until like a week ago when Jessel turned up with eight chemical suits. I wish you don't see fit to use it or recycle it for other purposes. So we're just helping him out on that front, you can say. trombone because it was the shiniest and I thought yeah I'm having him. When I left I wanted to change to like trumpet because they seemed to get all the good lines and stuff but my teacher managed to persuade me to stay on trombone. One New Year's I bumped into someone I knew on met at Glastonbury and I like oh yeah 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 I've got a studio I make drum and bass like come down. Came down and kind of saw how it was made being so heavily into the music it was like I have to learn to figure out how to create this music because it ain't like you can get together with a load of mates and just get a jungle tune going so it was like just trying to get myself to be able to make drum and bass was guess how I got into all the equipment and the studio and the computers and the software and stuff through getting into that is how I got into the whole production thing. Music isn't really something that you own so to speak get props for creating something but whichever way you look at it you was inspired by someone else you was inspired by someone else you was inspired by someone else it goes all the way back down the chain thousands of years yeah it's all grown on top of each other it's like a tree it all had its roots it all started somewhere 
And if you recognise it as this, you recognise it as that. It's like, it is all interconnected in one way or form or another. So we're going on the D connector here at the back. Instead of using the phonos, <coughs> because uh, we're never going to find enough XLR to phonos to, to make that work, we'll come straight off XLR female tails to D sub connector. That's one way of doing it, and switching these to digital input and taking uh, one of the T-diff cables that you should also find in that drawer. We do take on people from time to time. We need to do that, you know, and, um, and usually it's professionals because it's quite high-end work. So that to have trainees here, we don't have a large enough staff to have a bunch of trainees and have them trained up full time. It really is more of an apprenticeship. And so to take on an apprentice is quite a big deal for, in my head, really, because, you know, you can't just have them come in once a month and, and tell them, go and make the tea and would you go down to the shop and get the sandwiches and, and blah, blah, blah. You can do that if you like, but it's not going to inspire anyone. I think experience counts for 80%. You, know? you quickly learn if you plug something in wrong and it blows up a set of speakers. You, you learn not to do that again. You know, when there is work available, there are sessions here that Ahmad can take and, and do professionally. So he's on our list of engineers. I came in here and it smelled of melt multi plastic. A musical knowledge and understanding is essential, yeah. Even if you can't play an instrument, I'm not saying if you can't play an instrument, you can't be an engineer, but, but an understanding of the language of music is essential to be a good engineer. Not necessarily to be a good assistant engineer. You could always gain good musical experience while being an assistant engineer. We thought we would uh, start jamming basically last summer. We had a bit of time on our hands. So we started. Yeah, friends got together and yeah. uh, took it from there really. Started with just a few of us and more seemed to come each week. Yeah, yeah. And people then uh, come and gone yeah. over the times and uh, eventually. People that, kind of, yeah. people that stayed is what you see now really, plus, plus a few additions kind of picked up along the way. Yeah, I was a nine when I started piano. Started sax at 12, 13. I think I'm the latest starter here. I started at 10 years. That's all of us here have been through that sort of school system style, mm. like big orchestras, jazz bands, all that sort of stuff. And that's why it's, it keeps us locked together because we've all been through that sort of strict structure rehearsal. You know, we, when we rehearse, we don't just sit about and, and smoke fags and things like that. You know, we actually do spend, if we're paying for somewhere, we do get on with it and, and actually work really hard and make the most of the time, innit? You know? No, image is an equal factor nowadays, as probably as it always has been. You know, presentation is very paramount when it comes down to um, you being recognised. I mean, you always want to, you know, be looking your best if, if someone's going to idolise you. Unless you're a goth. When are you ready, Mel? I'm always ready for you. Let me go and take one. Where are your friends, your family, to drag you back to reality? They're frozen out, forgotten or dead. Am I in tune? I've seen the dirty little games that you play, and I don't believe a single word that you say. Much better, much better. Um, have a listen to that. I went to school with Ahmad. He went to, he stayed on and did A-levels. When Ahmad finished his A-levels, he decided he wanted to do a course in sound engineering and he got involved at MIDI. 
doing a sound engineering course there. And that's where he met Mel. Just gradually, I think his schedule built up and you know, he's working with loads and loads of people. And I wanted to work with someone new, get a different angle on my music. Is it? And why put us in touch? He gave Mel my number. I got a text message saying um, that she wanted to collaborate with me. So that was it. We met up and Oggy was there as well. Just hung out, played each other a few tracks. Just decided to get together and, and do some stuff together, really. I've always been singing since I was very young. Um, I sang in primary school, secondary school. I did performing arts at college and then I did a music degree. I've always liked chart music, I'm not ashamed to admit that. And growing up in the 80s, I loved pop music. Michael Jackson, um, Cindy Lauper, Madonna. I essentially call myself a pop artist, because pop is popular. And I don't want to be unknown. I don't want my music to be so pretentious that no one's going to hear it. I want it to be commercial, I want it to be popular. And I want it to be catchy and sophisticated. No favourites. Temple Street. Yep. Nice. I'm going to have my photo taken. It's for the cover of my forthcoming EP, just kind of publicity shots. Um, I don't do ballads and I don't really do sentimental music. So my image, obviously, and my photos has to reflect that. So it has to be quite stylized, quite simple, quite hard. Nothing to maybe um, feminine or, you know, just tacky. I never touch your body. I never your because it's going to be in black and white, and it's going to be with graphics, the makeup has to be very, very strong. Hair has to be big, it's big in the head, close to God. That's my motto. Just count it up. I'm quite glamorous anyway, as you probably noticed. So just make it glamorous. I don't do grunge or natural look. It's not me. We met at school when we were 11 years old, mm -hmm. and she's very tall and I was very small, <laughs> and nothing's changed since. Sweden is the, one of the largest pop music markets. It's larger than England, and they have a tradition of very good pop music. Simple as that. I think it's also important not to just focus on one place. It's not just all about London and what's happening in England and Europe. There's such a big market out there. And I think it's a good idea for artists to kind of challenge themselves and, and go over and, and see what happens because that's a different market. I'm really glad I came to Sweden because with my music I've kind of put out a feeler and people who I respect and who are in a good position within the music industry in Sweden have finally heard my music. People know about me, people know what I'm about and that's really important that I've got feedback in a totally different market to London and in a different country, different culture and I think that's a good thing. It's probably even more difficult now. Making the music and, and all of those things that um, come personally is so much easier than it is marketing and selling your wares. For as simple as people believe it is with pirate radio stations and you know, um, Radio One have the urban chart or now you have one extra. If you take a global view of it, it's not really cool. The idea of a single is it's just the one track and um, it's the one track that you you literally got to promote, it gets played in clubs, it gets played on radio and it's the one track that eventually like you know if it does successfully will be in the top 40. So even though it's the one song it's kind of that's the everyday thing when you're promoting a single. It's a big garage slash house anthem and 
and so um, we've got to promote it because it's going to be in the shops in about two weeks time on vinyl so we literally go around to all the sort of clubs that play that style of music literally perform it for the audience and hopefully they'll like it and go out and buy it I basically want to know how I would go about getting that from being on an independent label to a major. It's kind of who you know right. as well in this industry. I think, yeah. you know, it's really who you know. And, you know, if you can maybe hook on to a certain DJ um, who's got the power to... Sort of play it. You know, get it exposed and, you know, then record companies might come knocking on your door rather than the other way around. Right, let's have a little bit of a mic check. 07984 Just setting ourselves up. Gonna bring Oggy on the mic very, very shortly, so hold tight for that. 07984 With someone starting off, it it's, can be a you know, a tough, tough slug, unless there's some sort of buzz going about it. And usually the buzz will start at radio or press. I've seen Oggy do Follow Me PA before. It is a wicked anthem and he is a wicked vocalist. Gives him goosebumps every time I hear it. Keep up the good work. It might be better to take it to an independent plugger. Who knows? Yeah. You know, and you've got the facts there. You've got some facts to back this track up. You, you are doing PAs. You've got yeah. all the facts there to say that, you know, people are listening yeah, and they're right. loving it. Yeah. You want to tell everyone uh, age, where you're from, where you grew up, etc. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm from, I'm local. I'm from New Cross. Do you know what I mean? Local as in South East London. And um, yeah, basically, I grew up around here. I went to Deptford Green, studied music for a while, and um, went to Westminster University. I happened to start working with Lynx, which is um, uh, well, he's known as Link and P. Right. And um, he introduced me to Danny C. And one day I get a phone call from yourself and Danny that is right. asking me to work on a track. And boom, we did it in one night and it was finished in the morning. Yeah, it's wicked, isn't it? Yeah. So, a vocal talent, hold tight for this one. This one, Oggy on vocals, I'll let you introduce the rest, mate. Okay, this is Follow Me. Um, brand new track from Hux, Danny C, myself. DJ Hux and Danny C. Aim records and a gift. Follow me, uh, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Such a classic tune, it's like the tune's never died. The tune, tune's 10 years old anyway, so it's not really a time thing. I'm not really on a rush on this one because the tune's going to stay around forever anyway. It's one of those tunes that stay in a DJ's box, and the only reason that we've done it was because the original was too slow. So we've done a faster version to mix in with the, like the garage beats of today. It ain't even a garage tune originally, it was an American house thing or whatever you call it. I don't know what you call it. Listen, I couldn't, I couldn't predict a hit, mate, if it just smacked me in the face. I wouldn't know. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here on the Oakland Road. Do you know what I mean? I'd be in LA. Do you know what I mean? So, like, what the fuck do I know at the end of the day? We're all looking for that. We all want to write that tune that just works. Do you know what I mean? Whether or not you're playing it on acoustic guitar or in a fucking get a studio with garage beats or on a fucking set of bongos, it works. Do you know what I mean? Really good. Best year ever. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, did you see that? <laughs> right. Right. I thought that was going to flop out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is out on AIM Records. Follow me 2004. Danny C. Hutch.
yourself, Augie. Thank you, thank you. That was heavy. It was like the audience was electrifying. The crowd was so up for it and everyone was so friendly, do you know what I mean? So it was just, it, the more that they were amped, the more we were amped. And it just, I thought it was wicked. I was up in the DJ booth, you could see the spotlight on him, he had it entertained. I mean, if you see that PA tonight, you've got to expect more from him coming up. Absolutely brilliant. Remember, Oggy, AIM UK, big things coming. Definitely. I think the industry itself is changing, it's probably more down to that because I don't think there's a lack of candidates out there or a lack of good artists. It's just the industry now needs it really quick and it's far more disposable than it was in the days of the mama and puppets, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I think it's more a cause of that than anything else because there's definitely not a lack of young people who, who want to pursue a career in the industry. It's about dreams, it's about believing in your dreams um, and, and I think that's where it all starts. So you must believe in what you're doing and I think integrity means a lot. It's all in the principles, you just got to believe in yourself. I really do believe dreams come true. We all can't be Madonnas, you know. We all can't be Bob Marley. It's important imagery and how one carries themselves. And I guess how you, as an individual, see yourself. It's a way of life. And if you want to endure it and you want to be there for a long time, you've got to think about tomorrow. And maybe because um, everything's so rushed and packaged and cycled up and done like that so quickly, people don't look at that, but it's really important that they do.